Noobs often think they're the best gamer alive, and most of them don't have any insight on their own arrogance, and it's annoying. But why does it happen? We have to understand that most, at least good, game design facilitates player progression. For example, Doom Eternal is phenomenal at this, helping you learn and grow as you play. Video games are meant to be played and learned and make you feel good as you hit your goals, unless it's an old NES game or Battletoads. This just makes sense, right? If a player can't learn the mechanics, push, and be challenged, and grow as a player, they feel frustrated and down on their luck, or if it's actually luck and just bad RNG. They won't feel satisfied with the experience. They'll throw the game down in anger and frustration, leave a negative review on Steam saying, this sucks, and then get the refund. So, games are incentivized to try and prevent this from happening by making good games, even though not everyone agrees on what makes a good game. But why does this actually happen? When it does, there are a couple things that explain why. These are theories in psychology called the Dunning-Kruger effect and the four stages of competence. Now I know this might sound like some magical Zelda potion concoction, but I'll make it super easy to understand and you'll get why that you feel the way you do about these kinds of players in this situation and how it relates to video game design and maybe see if you've been doing this as well. The Dunning-Kruger effect, as it relates to gaming, basically states that the less experienced you are at something, the better you think you are. And once you become an expert, you realize just how much you don't actually know about the game. In the middle ground, they realize there's a long yet exciting road ahead of them. Why does this happen? It's caused by a lack of self-awareness or self-assessment. The less you know, the more you think you know, and the more you actually know, the more you realize how little you actually do know. So you have a new player that just jumped into the game, plays against a few easy bots, makes some quick easy kills, and think they're the greatest thing in the universe. If their team loses, they blame the others, because surely it's not their lack of skill that fueled the loss, right? Now we know bots typically do ease players into the game by giving them a few or easier matches, get them used to the flow of it, but that's a whole other topic. It's a double curse. Without expertise, it's difficult to play well, but it's also hard to know that you're not playing well. Here's the cool thing. If a player grows in skill and learns the mechanics that the designer put forth for us to learn with that good game design, then we begin to realize that, as we grow as a player, the world has begun to open up to us, and we see now that there's so much more out there that we didn't know. Because the newer player doesn't know that they don't know, while the intermediate begins to see that humility and grace are valuable traits to hold as a gamer, that there's always someone out there that will put you in your place. And the expert? Well, they realize just how deep knowledge can go in their game, that you always need to learn. Because when you quit learning, you start dying. Now, by this point, a little light bulb may be going off in your head, because you've seen and felt this. But let's make that bulb shine a little brighter and see which of the four stages of competence that you fall into. So as we go into the next really cool thing that ties this all together, I found that most people think that they're subscribed, but they actually aren't. So if you can do me a favor and check, I'd really appreciate it. Because if you like this video and you want more, it's on the way. At the bottom, we have unconscious incompetence. Now, I feel that these levels are divided into two parts. Part one is the awareness, unconscious, and part two, the ability, incompetence. So, unconscious implies that the player is unaware of what they're doing, and incompetence states that, well, they're not very good at it. They don't know that a problem exists, or their mistakes in gameplay, so they may not be as receptive to learn how to fix them, instead often blaming the game for their own failures. Here's an example. Here we see the players sort of bumbling about the arena. They're trying to learn as they go, but they're having a pretty tough time. Maybe using the wrong thing here, bad positioning and situational awareness there, and they start making some kills and then they get stoked about it. They feel like that, since they've done it a little, they know a lot about how to teach this to others. You know, just use this gun, kill this enemy, and if we die, it's not my fault, it's yours. <laughs> However, great skill does not necessarily make one a top tier teacher or a teacher at all. Hopefully, they're willing to learn from those who have gone ahead of them. If they do, they can begin progressing to the next stage. If not, well, they'll be stuck here eternally. Conscious incompetence is the next step up. It is here that learning can begin, because the gamer realizes, hey, I'm new to this game and I'm not so great yet, but I'm excited because there's so much to learn. This is a huge turning point and why I think this relates to the Dunning-Kruger effect. When the player takes accountability for their actions and is ready to learn how to become the best they can ever be, growth can truly begin. This is the person who is so eager to help and learn with others. They ask questions in Discord, they practice, and yes, they're new, but they're so very receptive to learn. They apply the knowledge and they try to make it work. They really want this. 
but as we all are at some point, they just haven't learned the mechanics and what the game asks of them. But just watch. This is the kind of player you want to check back on in three to six months. By that point, they'll be so much better. Like I mentioned earlier, a game like Doom Eternal really teaches the player how to grow by how its combat is designed, and it truly facilitates player progression. That's a pretty fancy way of saying it makes you get good. Now, I've had quite a few people say, hey, I started on the easiest mode, now I'm on the hardest. I never thought I could do it, no matter if they're young or if they're older. This is where the player's amazing journey truly begins. Conscious competence is when you really begin to see what you're capable of. This is when you've learned how to play the game. You know the weapons, the enemies, the strategies, all the levels, you name it, you got it. You're in the fun zone now. But to arrive at this zone of fun, it takes hard work, thought, grit, and drive. It's not instinctual just yet. You can do it, but it's pretty tough. This is when a game really pushes you to your limits and you get a great mental and physical workout. Now, if you know the guns, the tech, the movement, you fit here. Really though, it doesn't take the advanced gameplay mechanics to be at this stage. You just need to know how to play, enjoy it, and do pretty well at it. Not necessarily playing at the highest level. As long as you have some success and know the game and reach that finish line, this is what counts. It doesn't matter that it took you blood, sweat, and tears to get there, dang it, but you got there and that's what matters. You are consciously competent. But here it is, the holy grail. The Triforce, the BFG 9000, the 100% completionist. The end goal for us all at the top of the heap, unconscious competence. When you finally reach this point, you have enough experience in the game that you can perform at your top level and do so instinctually. You ever hit that flow zone of a game where you're just playing and everything is moving and you've done it all a million times before and your body is just taking over your movements? That is this, the true fun zone full of fast flow putting you into a frenetic frenzy. These are the people that dominate speedruns, challenge runs, blindfolded play. They know the game inside and out, or have such an inclination to play, such a shroud or any pro, that it just seems effortless. But you don't see the hours and days and weeks and months and years that got them to this level. This is the expert stage that relates to the Dunning-Kruger in my eyes. Once a player can perform everything they know without thinking about it, while still yet realizing there is so much more to learn, this is the end goal of the gamer. Expert unconscious competence to truly rip and tear until it is done. You want to play like them, but are you willing to do what it takes to get there? Any way you cut it, if you find this type of player, become a student. Learn everything you can from them and soak it up. And eventually, one day, you just may surpass them and become the master. Next up, watch this video on Doom Super Shotgun and why it's one of the most important FPS guns over 30 years. Thanks to the channel members for the support and thank you for watching.